And finally tonight, the Jesuit Order is celebrating a major anniversary this week. It is the 400th anniversary of the canonization of its founder, St. Ignatius of Loyola. And there is another reason for the Jesuits to celebrate. The Jesuits, also known as the Society of Jesus, are commemorating the 400th anniversary of the canonization of St. Francis Xavier. EWTN has released a new movie about one of Ignatius Loyola's earliest companions. St. Francis Xavier to the ends of the earth was shown to Jesuits in Rome over the weekend. The order has grown to more than 16,000 priests, brothers, and novices around the world. Joining us now from Rome is Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief. Andreas, great to see you as always. Uh, can you tell us more about this? Sure, and thank you, Tracy, for having me. This Saturday, we expect Pope Francis to head the celebrations of the 400-year anniversary of the canonization of St. Ignatius and of St. Francis Xavier. If his health allows, I should add. As you know, Tracy, he just had to cancel a trip to Florence last week because of severe pain in his knee. But we know that St. Ignatius is dear to the Pope, coming from the Society of Jesus himself. The celebrations will be held at the Jesuits' principal church here in Rome, Chiesa del Gesù, that's the Church of Jesus, where Ignatius is buried and St. Francis Xavier's hand is being displayed. Because, by the way, his body, so the one of St. Francis Xavier, is buried in Goa, India. Only his hand was brought to Rome. And with this hand, he baptized at least 30,000 people throughout Asia. That is why he became the patron saint of missionary work. And Andreas, what will your team do to cover this anniversary? What are you planning? Well, you know that Jesus' command to bring his message of love to the ends of the earth is at the core of EWTN's calling. So we will not only cover the 400-year anniversary, but we already partnered with Christiana Video and the Jesuits to produce a fantastic docudrama on St. Francis's life. We presented it two days ago together with the global Jesuit leadership at Chiesa del Gesù. Many people from the Society of Jesus and from the Vatican Courier were present, including, for example, Paolo Ruffini, prefect of the Dicastery for Communication. He's in charge of all the communication activities of the Holy See. This just shows how important the person of St. Francis Xavier and his message is for the Vatican and for Pope Francis as well. And Andreas, before I let you go, what would you say is St. Francis Xavier's message for our church today? Well, first of all, I'd like to invite everyone to see for themselves, and you can watch this docudrama on EWTN free on demand online. And to answer your question, Tracy, I believe there are three things we can learn from this great saint. First of all, be open, be radical, and be faithful. Being open means asking the Lord what He wants you to do with your life and not to set Him any limits. Leaving his ancestral roots and going first to Paris and then to Rome to team up with St. Ignatius and start a society for priests was considered completely crazy by his peers. But when St. Francis Xavier then gave again everything up to travel to India and Far East Asia, facing persecution and almost certain death, people were just shaking their heads. That hinted at how radical he was with following Jesus and bringing his message to the ends of the earth. It's a good question for us for Lent as well. Are we as radical and committed when we're being laughed at for being Catholics, for believing in one truth? Or do we easily give in and follow mainstream morality? And then also faithfulness. St. Francis Xavier did the unthinkable. He baptized tens of thousands and many millions of Catholics can trace their faith heritage back to him. But he failed on his one true goal to bring Jesus to China. He died of a sickness while waiting to be allowed into the country. And yet, he became one of the greatest missionary saints of the Church. And will we remain as faithful to God and to the teachings of the Church as he did, despite hardships and despite failure? Well, I think, Tracy, those are the big questions for today, for our Church today. And St. Francis Xavier might certainly be an inspiration to all of us. Well, Andreas, thank you so much, as always, for your reporting. We appreciate Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief. Thank you again.